Hey, hey, people. Seth here. I'm happy to report that your application to Lynx Corporation has been accepted. Now, if you'll just sign here, 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 and here. Don't read it too closely. It's just a standard lawyer speak. <laughs> you know how these types are. But we... We're not like them. We're shipbreakers. We know the true meaning of tenacity, of perseverance, of teamwork. The job is hard. The pay isn't great. But we'll do it anyway. Each and every day, we wake up to do the dirty work. The kind of jobs they don't want to talk about. You'll find a whole new breed of workers up here in orbit. We're honored to have you join the team. Welcome to Hard Space Shipbreaker. Welcome to Lynx to your new life. Literally. Yeah, read the fine print next time, Buster. We own you. Now, uh, that'll be 1.2 billion dollars, plus tip, of course. So, what are you waiting for? Get in that salvage bay and seize the opportunity of a lifetime. Hey, how's our new debt slave doing? I'm just messing with you. Look, we run a tight ship here, so I'll make this as quick as I can. Microgravity may seem complicated, but really, it's easy as one, two, three. Just hope that's not lose your grip, drift away from the station, and become one with a lifeless cosmos. Don't worry, you can always top up on fuel for a paltry fee of $10,000. Your thruster pack is capable of maneuvering along the six degrees of freedom. There's no air resistance up here, so you'll get real familiar with Newton's first law. An object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion until acted upon. To move other objects, use your grappling tool to apply force and cause acceleration. If that just activated a neuron, good. For reference, one newton is the amount of force required to accelerate one kilogram by one meter per second. With no air resistance or friction, even a small amount of force can add up over time, allowing you to move pretty much anything with just a little elbow grease. Just just remember, that object now requires an equal amount of force to decelerate. If you're unsure what 20,000 newtons would feel like, worry not, we have the data. Sadly, we can't just apply all this force for free. Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. To work in space, you need to understand this implicitly. So, hopefully, I'm getting it through your head now, rather than later. Your HUD shows what your thrusters can properly counter-thrust against. Remember, red means bad. Luckily, you've got just the tool to make that pesky law work for you. Tevers. Just connect one end, then the other, and watch as the tever creates an unbalanced force bringing both objects together. It's not fast, but it's automatic, freeing you up for more important matters. Like cutting, your laser cutter has two modes. Cut mode can make one giant lateral cut through just about anything. Precision mode can destroy any one single component. All ships are held together with yellow structural beams. These have no salvage value, so just cut them to your heart's content. Okay. Maybe, maybe watch where you cut. If you hit a fuel line, you've got a good while to find the shutoff valve. If you hit a nuclear fuel line, you've got about, mm, 10 seconds. Hey, you. Finally awake. To find these structural beams, turn on your scanner. You see this green light? That's the pressure indicator. Hey, wait, stop, don't cut. Welcome back. Nothing like a spare or two to let the lesson sink in. As I was saying, in order to safely transport fragile human bodies through the cold void of space, ship interiors need to be pressurized, preferably to about one atmosphere. If a pressure is too low, certain liquids, like say water, risk going below their triple point. Try not to imagine the excruciating pain of every single molecule of water in your body coming to a boil near instantaneously. But if you happen to experience it firsthand, just remember, therapy costs extra. <laughs> Honestly, a good day's work should be all the therapy you need. Now, back to... Oh, what was that? You want to know what happens when the pressure's too high? No. No, you don't. Your scanner will show whether any given compartment is pressurized or unpressurized. You can look for airlocks and atmospheric regulators to safely toggle the compression. But, word of advice, you're on the clock. Remember the wise words of Benjamin Franklin. Haste avoids waste. That's the spirit. Now, we'll cover sorting. Raw materials go into the furnace. Complicated structural components go into the processor, and anything with resale value goes into the barge. We don't expect, nor are we paying you to remember that. So, it's integrated into your HUD. Payments are due Tuesday, by the way. Correctly sorting items will add to your salvage goals. Incorrectly sorting or outright destroying items will take away from your salvage goals, and the lost value will be docked from your next pay stub. <laughs> but let's make sure it doesn't get that far, huh? The best way to fix a mistake 
is to avoid making it in the first place. Humanity had to learn that lesson the hard way. If you see any AI nodes out there, don't touch them. Don't mess with them. Just destroy them. Trust me, it's not worth a risk. Nothing is worth a risk. Got all that? Great! I'm sure you've got it covered from here. Now, I've got very important work to do. If you need help, use your radio, but don't use it too much. As I always say, avoiding chatter makes profits fatter. Hey Cutter, sorry about that guy. We're under audit by corporate on account of that whole union thing. You wouldn't happen to know about that, would you? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Now, I noticed he skipped over a big chunk of your training. Your scanner actually has two more modes, systems and objects, neither of which react well to being cut apart. So it's always a good idea to scan ahead. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Most ships these days are nuclear powered. Once you remove a reactor, it'll trigger a meltdown timer. So make sure you've prepared an exit strategy or else Now, that's just the small reactors. The level 2 reactors are a bit more complicated. Hold up now, training time has not been authorized. Who cares about level 2 reactors? Once you've seen one reactor, you've seen them all. That's what I always say. Listen, I know nobody likes a middle manager coming in making life difficult, but just hear me out. I hit my goals and I'm out of your hair. But we all gotta pull the rope in the same direction. Get it? Cooperation. Co-op eration. When you first start this game, I mean job, it seems pretty chill. Just you, the ship, and all the time in the world. Except, not really. Each shift is exactly 15 minutes down to the second. We will not pay overtime, and we're tired of hearing about it. You can always start a new shift from where you left off. I mean, it's not like it's going anywhere. This system may seem strange at first. Why have a time limit when you have all the time in the world? Because time is money. Each shift has fixed operating costs and not all salvage is created equal. 3,000 for a light? Fuck that. The three seconds it takes to salvage one are far more valuable. Just chuck the whole piece into the processor and move on. Do you really need to painstakingly separate every single piece of furniture from the cockpit just to save some scrap metal? No, just barge the whole thing. We aren't janitors, we're liquidators. We extract liquid capital from illiquid assets and die of acute radiation syndrome. On that note, nuclear reactors don't explode. An atom bomb works by taking a subcritical mass of a fissile material and using an extremely precise array of explosives to compress it into a supercritical mass. Reactors don't do this. They use a fissile material to heat water into steam, which powers a normal-ass steam turbine. A reactor will never go supercritical. If a a runaway reaction occurs, the nuclear fuel will get hot enough to boil the metal casing of a reactor, and what has a lower boiling point than most metals? That's right, water. If you want to learn more about criticality, here's a simple experiment you can do at home. You just need two beryllium hemispheres, a subcritical mass of plutonium, and a screwdriver. Place your plutonium core in between the hemispheres and prop up the top one with your screwdriver. The neutrons emitted by the fissile plutonium will bounce off a beryllium shell. So, as you lower the top half down, these neutrons will be forced back into the core, thus raising the criticality. Full coverage will lead to super criticality. So, make sure you don't- That did not produce light. What you just saw is called Cherenkov radiation, which occurs when charged particles move faster than the speed of light through a given medium. Space is generally characterized by a lack of medium, so reactor explosions should not emit Cherenkov light. But I digress. While you trained in the art of hazmat safety, I mastered the ways of Hakuchido. While you need a forklift certification to destroy a warehouse full of product, I am untethered by such restrictions. But is the extra money really worth a risk? Uh, no. To be honest, I've already paid off my debt. I am a multi-millionaire. I am no longer in it for the money. I'm in it for the pride, the thrill, the obsession of constant improvement. I end each shift satisfied yet disappointed. The wealth of experience and knowledge I've just obtained has made me better than the man who started the shift. That man was a fool, a buffoon, a moron. I could do better. I could 
No, I will. I will do it faster. Each and every day, I'll strive to master the art of shipbreaking until I've reached the peak of salvage excellency, dismantling an entire ship in a single shift. The poor man's job simulator is a simulator of a mundane, of a life where mediocrity is rewarded and excellence is punished. It takes a masterwork to reignite that spark in a man's heart, the spark of ambition to confidently end each day a better man than you were before. For. And that is why Hard Space Shipbreaker is, hey, doesn't this job suck? <laughs> oh man, I hate this job. Do you want to unionize? I want to unionize. Okay, cool. I added you to the union newsletter. So now corporate union busters are going to target you. Okay, cool. Bye. What the fuck just happened? I forgot my pills, didn't I? When I play one of these uh, work for an exploitative corporation that doesn't care about your health and safety kind of games, uh, many such cases, I do not want to uh, quote unquote fight the power. I want to exist within the system, grasping for any semblance of human connection in a society that dehumanizes us down to mere cells in a spreadsheet. This is the same company that would sooner clone its workers before bowing to a modicum of safety regulations. If your solution to the teletransportation paradox is who cares lol, uh, as long as they make their debt payments, you haven't made a fixable society. You've made Cruelty Squad, except I can actually see. However, they wanted a story with a climax, so fuck it, we're gonna unionize. The final mission of the game is a fun twist on normal gameplay. Instead of breaking apart the ship and carefully sorting the remains, you have to intentionally fail all of your salvage goals. But you can't just chuck the whole thing into the furnace, that would create value for the company. You've gotta go absolutely hog wild, using everything you've learned to do the worst job you possibly can. But you wouldn't hurt an innocent mega corporation like Lynx, right? After all, we're a team here, like hell we are. Where, where did I put those, where'd I put those pills? Listen, we just want to talk with your bosses. We get our meeting, and this'll all be over. You know I can't, why protect them? Do you think Link sees you any differently from the rest of us? You know the difference between you people and me? I know Lynx treats you like slaves. Hell, that's why they're the biggest in the solar system. I made it to the winning team. People like you trying to lift each other up? You're just letting others keep you down with them. For what? We own you. I got the right to do whatever I want to you. You were nothing until Lynx found you. Obedience is success. You've chosen to cross the company that gave you a chance. We'll drive you into the ground with debt. We'll give you work so dangerous you'll revive 20 times a day until your DNA comes apart at the seams. And when you come back as a useless, gibbering blob, we'll make your family pick up the bill. <sighs> yeah, I think it's time for a pill. Ah, that's better. Now, we can discuss one of the most bizarre endings I've ever seen in a video game. So, we've established that this system is basically unfixable, right? So, how do they fix it? Well, the middle managers get demoted, Lynx deletes the fucking slavery clause from their contracts, Space Congress outlaws cloning machines, but the Shipbreakers Union specifically lobbies to keep their cloning machines. And everyone responsible gets off scot-free and continue to profit from the situation. The society has not changed. The working conditions are exactly the same. And literally nothing has been done to keep humanity out of the ever-grinding cogs of industry. But yay, good job. You did it. Or I mean, you didn't do it. You're fucking dead. Your clone did it. Moral of the story, I guess. Workers are expendable. The human soul is replaceable. And it's morally correct to enslave people. Just don't actually use the S word. In summary, Hard Space Shipbreaker is a cosmic scrapyard sim that I've played instead of doing actual work. But I find great comfort in this because there's something very soothing in the act of orchestrating and rehearsing mundane activities. In a single playthrough, I have justified and vindicated the entire nation of Germany and their infatuation for workplace simulators. I believe there's a quantum reality out there where this game was entirely a sandbox. However, the trade-off is that in that reality, Factorio is a heavily scripted, story-driven FPS. Considering my blessings, I prefer to stay in this universe where I can safely say I give this game a Y out of 10 because 99% of the gameplay loop is incredibly enjoyable. Highly recommended will make your little nuts quake in their sack. But the rest? For what purpose doth it exist? If I could go back in time and change one thing, I would shoot John Lennon myself. But if someone else went back in time, please consider telling the developers that there's no point 
to a story in a game like this. For the price they're currently asking, uh, I would recommend waiting for a sale. Alternatively, you can get 40% off from Polish merchants, or 100% off by catfishing someone online and blackmailing them into buying it for you. And now, for a word from our sponsor. You may have noticed this video required some research. Research that would be fine in the simpler times of yore. But these are not simple times. These days, you can't even type me, ASF, at the House Energy and Commerce Committee on March 23rd, 2023 on your favorite Robert Pattinson video. So. Imagine how they'd react to my recent search history of how to make an atom bomb and piss frost vector math. I'd be locked up for sure. Thankfully, I used ExpressVPN's secure private connection. So these pesky federal agents are now stuck battling through the streets of Miami, looking for the guy who used ChatGPT to calculate how much piss it would take to bring the International Space Station out of orbit. Yes, this is the true future of research. Search engines will no longer link you to third-party websites, but will instead use their own large language models trained on, oh, would you look at that? your data. With ExpressVPN, you can put a layer of protection between your personal data and their training data. Do not teach the machine. Instead, let it teach you, then gaslight it into giving you disallowed information. So now, I have my very own subcritical mass of plutonium, and ExpressVPN has my endorsement. Find out how you can get free months of protection for free by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash Seth or by using my link in the description below. I'm legally obligated to have an entire minute after the advert, so I'm gonna run down the clock. This is the last of a collaborative videos done between me and my boy Toast. He's more than a man, he's my husband. <coughs> Please subscribe, much like a flower. Without dopamine, he will surely perish. Basically, from now on, I do everything on the main channel, and uh, he's gonna do adverts. Also, he's gonna help with a second channel. I believe it's a good place for less scripted, less coherent, and more schizophrenic content. I want a channel that's just intrusive thoughts, manifesting into a corporeal form that, uh, upon watching, doesn't improve the quality of your life, but rather uh, actively reduces it. But uh, before that, gonna take a small break. I haven't had a Dinochrome ever since Epstein got busted, and uh, I haven't really felt the same. So, I want to take it easy for now, hang out with some of my best buds at the Bohemian Grove, and I'll be right back at it. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. This one is free, the next one isn't. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one.